Then we built it, and we, now it has 10,000 employees. We, we have a building in uh, Manhattan, 12-story building, and, and uh, we only used uh, the principles of mental seeds, and it means uh, plant a seed for the thing you want to see in your future, and then it will come to you, because much of the world that you see around you is perceptions. It's, much of it is perceptions. So, um, and planting a seed, as we said last night, there are four steps to planting a seed. Uh, I'll review those four and then we'll go on to something new, okay? So you can plant a seed. I've, I've gone to many, many countries, uh, tens of thousands of people. We're very popular in China, Russia, South America, Singapore, everywhere. Uh, not Australia yet. Uh, but. I listen to people, I see what do they want in their lives, and I'll tell you there are three immediate things that people want. First one is, we said last night, financial independence. I want to be financially independent, you know. You would be interested, I think, to know that all over the world, when you ask people what is their dream, they will say financial independence, and not wealth. They don't say wealth. They say, I want to be financially independent. And then you say, why? And they say, because I want to do other things with my life. I don't want to struggle my whole life for money. I want to make enough money to help other people. And I, after many years of teaching, 30, 35 years of teaching, you should know all over the world, people's dream is to help other people. Okay? You think not, but it is. All these people are like, I want to become independent financially because I want to make donations and I want to support this and I want to see children have good education and I want to help poor people and all over the world it's the same. In every country that I've been to, uh, many, many countries. That's the first basic goal of people. Second goal is companionship, uh, relationships. It's lonely to come home to a big uh, house. You know, the more rooms, the more lonely. <laughs> you know, and then you're sitting in, one, in the corner of one of the rooms eating dinner by yourself and no one to talk to, no one to tell about what you did today, the little successes in your life and the, the problems in your life. We need companionship. Everybody would like to have a companion, uh, someone to share their life with. So I was in South China one day, Guangzhou, somebody asked me, or Shenzhen, I don't know, somebody asked me the question, you know, can you use this method uh, not just to make a big company, but could you actually plant a partner. Could you plant a future partner? <laughs> so I was like, oh, they didn't teach us that in the monastery. <laughs> but uh, I thought about it, and then we dug up some scriptures, and yeah, you can. You can use it to create a partner. And then somebody else, of course, wanted to know if they could just make some small improvements on their partner <laughs> uh, with uh, mental seeds. And uh, you can, you can. So you don't have to be in your life without a partner. If you understand this system, you, you don't have to be in your life without a partner. And you also don't have to spend your life with someone who can't figure out to lower the toilet seat uh, after 20 years of training. You know, so uh, you can change anything about your partner, everything, without talking to them, okay, because they are they are basically coming from you. You can change anything. You can, imp you can improve your partner. You can make them perfect. If you understand these principles that we will talk about tonight, okay? Mm. Then other people say, no, I have a nice partner. I, I have a nice house. I have a nice income. But I have physical pains. I have a cancer or I have a bad back or, you know. Or I have lost my youthful energy and it kills me. Or, or my creativity that I had when I was young, and it kills me, you know. If you've been a very creative person, or you've been a person who, who was juggling six businesses at the same time, and then suddenly you can't do it anymore, or you can't think of the next new idea, it's very, very frustrating. Or you're a musician or an actor, and you lose your touch, uh, it's very, very frustrating. And uh, you lose your youth, you lose your the sharpness and clarity of, of a youthful mind and, and the body of a youth. And then it's very frustrating for a person. 
uh, to say, I used to do that yoga pose. Like five years ago, I could do that pose, you know, and that, that's very frustrating. Or, or you start telling people about what a creative guy you were 10 years ago because you haven't created anything new. And can you fix that, you see? Uh, when you say that things are coming from seeds in your mind, does it apply to the mind itself? Is the condition of your mind and your own energy also coming from seeds in your own mind? And we say yes. It's, it's something, therefore it's coming from seeds in your mind. Everything is coming from seeds in your mind. Then people, are, you know, many people will jump on me and say, uh, metaphorically, and say, uh, can, you, can you plant peace in your mind? You know, can you plant a peaceful mind? And yeah, you can plant it. You can use the same principles. You can plant states of mind. You can change your basic attitude, your daily attitude, and become a more peaceful person. Then obviously the, the big question that people all over the world, after two days of this, we usually do two days and three days. We have a system. We do two days of open talks in a city, and then we do a three-day intensive retreat. They must leave the city. They must come with us somewhere. We gave a talk for British Airways. Uh, they wanted me to help with the strike. The union came and the management came. <laughs> and, you know, and they said, you have five minutes to sell us on your system. I said, I can do it. You know? and, and then they called us back and they said, okay, we'll go, to, we'll go out to the countryside with you. And they brought the vice presidents and they brought the union. And we, saw, we worked it out, you see. So we usually do two nights of a public talk and then anyone who wants to go deeper we have a team of teachers and then they help those people with their dreams. We have small breakout groups and, and they sit around tables and they say, you know, I want my husband to learn to wash the dishes. That's the most difficult karma. <laughs> but there is such a thing. <laughs> there is such a thing. Or, you know, I have a physical problem or, 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 you know, I have credit card problems or something like that. So we meet people individually. That's how. We usually call it two plus three. We do this thing all over the world. We are about to leave next week for uh, Paris, Hamburg, Munich, Stockholm, Oslo, and is that it? Did I forget some place? Huh? Zurich. Uh, and that's what we, we normally do. In a city, we do two plus three. After that, we're going to China, to Guangzhou, and Shenzhen, Shanghai, Beijing and uh, gender. Uh, so uh, people ask me that in every crowd, in every city, towards the end of the second night, people will ask me, can this system be used to create peace in the world? Okay? Money's nice, partner's good, health is great, youthful energy is exciting. Uh, inner peace is wonderful, but but can you use, can you affect a larger system called the globe with these ideas? Can, can, is the condition of the world also coming from my mind? And we say yes. And then how do I fix that? How do I affect that? And it's a very beautiful answer, okay? Just using the system creates peace in the world, okay? You, if you use this system, to achieve some dream that you have. Last night I asked everybody to close their eyes for one minute and, and you were supposed to think of some dream you have in your life. Okay, let's do it anyway. Let's just do it again, is that all right? Okay, we're not meditating, it's not anything weird, okay? Uh, just, I'm gonna be quiet for one minute. I'm good, I'm good. And um, pretend I'm the Wizard of Oz and I can give you anything you want. What would you want tonight, okay? In your life, what's the one thing that you would like to have in your life in the next month, okay? What do you, what, and we don't think much about it, but okay, I'm gonna shut up, which is very rare. Uh, one minute. Just think, what, what do you want? If I could give you anything, or if this system could give you anything, well, what would you like to happen in your life? Okay, got it? You don't have to tell anybody, just think about it, okay? And we'll talk about it. Last night, we talked about, I'm still doing a review of last night, real quick. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like I have to prove to you that the world is coming from your mind first, okay? Because uh, it's a new idea for us, all right? And there's a very simple way to prove it. We talked about it last night. I'm going to do it faster tonight so that the people who came don't get bored, all right? Uh, what is, and you have, to, you have to work with me, okay? You can't sit there like quiet, all right? Uh, you have to, if I ask a question, please yell out something, okay? We learn in the monastery if you yell loud enough, they don't notice that it's wrong. All right. Uh, what is this thing? B, B, pen. Uh, <laughs> if a dog comes in here, and a puppy dog, and I wave this thing in front of the puppy dog, what will they do with it? Yeah, they'll chew with it. Does the puppy dog see this as a pen? No. no. So far, you're good. Who's correct? The human or the dog? Both. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, if I take this object and put it on this chair, and uh, all the humans leave the room, and all the dogs also leave the room, at that time, which one is it? Yeah, good, good answer. I like it. All over the world, people will go, or people will go, every country, they go, uh-uh. By the way, if you care, and I'm not trying to make you a Buddhist, I'm not interested in that. I want you to get whatever your wish was five minutes ago, okay? I don't care what path you follow, it doesn't matter to me. I want to see you successful. Bunch of zillionaires next year, okay? Uh, really, I don't care. But if, you, if you're interested, that's the meaning of emptiness in, in Buddhism. That's the meaning of kong, of emptiness, okay? The meaning of emptiness is put this object on the, flo on the chair, all the people go out all the dogs go out, at that time, which one is it? Then when you go like this, you just became a Buddhist philosopher. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay? It doesn't mean you close your eyes, it doesn't mean nothing matters, it doesn't mean if someone kisses you or someone hits you, it's all the same. Those are all stupid. Okay? It just means until the person walks in or until the dog walks in, it's nothing yet. It's like a blank, white, Screen. Can you do a blank white screen? Your whole world is like a blank white screen, okay? And your mind is putting, your mind is the projector, and it's putting things around you, okay? They're all coming from your mind, all right? The pen thing with the dog proves that. It proves that, okay? If this were a pen, I'll give you another reality check. You ready? You give me your right hand. Show me your right hand. Okay. Is the pen coming from you or is the pen coming from the pen? You can do this or this, okay? We'll have a vote. This the pen is coming from me or the pen is coming from the pen? Go. Yeah, it's pretty unanimous. <laughs> okay? The pen is coming from me. Why? If the pen was coming from the pen, the dog would see a pen. Really? Okay, it's that simple. You don't need 25 years of diarrhea in India. I've just saved you, okay? <laughs> I just saved you all that work, you know? Uh, it, obviously, that, whenever you doubt that the world is coming from you, remember the dog in the pen. That's all. The world is coming from you, okay? All right? Uh, test, reality check. If I close my eyes, uh, could I make this something else? If this thing is coming from my mind, could I think positively and it would change into a big diamond? Let's try. <laughs> you know. No, it's still a pen. Okay? That's very important. It is not a matter of willpower. Positive thinking doesn't get you anywhere. Okay? You can wish for a week. You can pray for a week. You can want for a year. It won't make this a diamond. Is it coming from you? Yes. Can you close your eyes and make it whatever you want? No. Some other force is forcing you to see it as a pen. Something in your mind is forcing you to see it as a pen. What is that? We say a seed, a mental seed. There's a mental seed in your mind. The dog has a different seed, all right? A, a successful business person has a different seed than an unsuccessful business person. I gave the example yesterday of uh, 
a building that we bought in a bad area of New York, Tribeca. And then we made a lot of money from it. I'll give you another example. So I used to go to the India to the monastery to study. My monastery is in India because it, they all had to run away from their country, right? And they rebuilt their monastery in, in, in India. So now it has 4,000 monks there. So I used to go to the monastery, and then we used to buy diamonds in Mumbai, because this is the major center for cut diamonds. We only bought cut diamonds. Um, so I would have to go to Mumbai to buy diamonds. You know, uh, We bought, we used 30,000 stones a day. We, we, our factory turns out 30,000 stones a day. Uh, so, so I would have to buy 30,000 stones a day. You know, so I have to buy big, huge bags of diamonds in, in India. So I'd go to India and, and, you know, I would call New York and say, what color diamond you need today? <laughs> this is the old uh, Indian phone line. It's the copper cable beneath the ocean, right? And you've got to yell. Everybody in the office knows who you're talking to. You know, you go, I, 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 how many diamonds you need? 10,000. What color? Because they have A, B, C, D color, right? Down to Z. Then what color? I, M, M, what? M, M, 10,000 M color? M, M. <laughs> then for three days you can't get a line, right? You had to book the call. You had to reserve the call like three days ahead. And then if you're lucky, you get the call. So I'm like, okay, M color, if you care, is a PP color. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yellow, very disgusting yellow color. I'm like, geez, why do they need 10,000 PP color diamonds? <laughs> I don't know, but that's what they ordered, so that's what I'll, that's what I'll send, you know? So I, I went and I, I worked really hard and I bought, it's hard to buy 10,000 PP color diamonds. And uh, then, you know, you get them through customs. By the way, you always buy 10,000, you always buy 11,000. Do you know why? If you need 10,000, my cord is stuck. Hang on, can you get my cord out of here? Otherwise, I, I have to stand it. Okay. Why do you have to buy 11,000 di diamonds if you want to take 10,000 out of India? The customs guy will count them creatively. <laughs> and it will be 10 when you finish. And you're like, okay, all right, just give me the 10, you know? Yeah, he, no, he takes the 1,000. So anyway, you, you put 11,000 in the box. And then you, you, you have a wax seal and then you wire it shut with steel wire. It's in a metal box. And then you carry it on the plane. And then when you land at Kennedy, they meet you with the, Brinks meet you in an armored car. And two guards are with you all the time with guns. And then you come off the plane, you get in the armored car, and they take you to your office in the armored car. Our office had a special door where you went under the building before you got out of the armored car. So you go under the building. You have that building? Uh, we built uh, the basement, we remodeled the basement. It could handle about 10 FedEx trucks and the armored car. So down below there's an entrance, steel door, the truck goes in, you go up in a steel elevator to the boardroom, and they say, show us the diamonds. There's like eight vice presidents there, and you're like, okay, I got the diamonds, you know? And they're, they're like, open up the box. And the guys are standing with their guns, and you open up the box, and you cut the steel. And then you open up the parcel, you know. I don't know why, but diamonds are kept in paper, right? It's an old Dutch tradition. So you open the diamonds, you know, and uh, they all go, oh, <laughs> they're pee, pee color. I said, well, that's what you asked for. You know? And they're like, no, no, we didn't never ask you for pee, pee color diamonds. I said, you said M color. No, no, they said, I am going to call you tomorrow. <laughs> And I got 10,000 PP color diamonds. These are normally used in oil well drills. <laughs> they put them in the, they mount them on oil well drills. Nobody makes jewelry from these things, you know. So I'm like, all the vice presidents are giggling because vice presidents hate each other. And I'm like, and uh, everyone leaves and I'm looking at these 10,000 stones. And, uh, and I, some images flash into my mind. This is a creative, what do you call it? the throes of a creative moment, right? You have these images flash in your mind. First I see a ring, and it has five PP colored diamonds in like 18 karat, super yellow gold, you know? More yellow than normal, European standard, you know? All yellow. I see this ring, five matching PP colored diamonds. 
first flash, second flash, Saks Fifth Avenue, exclusive, you know? And then I hear golden diamond. The word golden diamond comes in my mind, you know? I hear it in my mind, I'm like, wow, yeah, we'll market it as a golden diamond, not PP diamond. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then I see an ad in the New York Times, second page on the right side at the bottom, quarter page ad for Gold and Diamond exclusive at Saks Fifth Avenue. We made $5 million from the PB Diamonds, you know? And, uh, you know, so the next board meeting was, uh, Mike, can you go get 10,000 more of those things, you know? And uh, it was a mistake, you know? The whole thing was a mistake. And the stones were worthless. They're just good for oil well drills, you know? So the big question is, why did those thoughts flash through my mind, you see? Uh, why does a creative moment happen to you? It could be in education, you see? Why do you get an insight uh, into some problem with education, with a school? Like you have a sudden insight into how to fix a school or, or how to have a cool program in a school. Where do flashes of insight come from? Where'd it go? <laughs> Okay? Go like this. <laughs> they come from you. Okay? Really, honestly, I'm trying to turn you on to something that I use my whole life now. I don't have any business training. I don't like business. I hate accounting. I don't like marketing. I don't like selling things. But, but with this knowledge, I made a $200 million company. Okay? And then I quit it. And I'm just doing other things. Just to prove I could do it. You see what I mean? And you can do anything. You want a creative flashes, you want to be creative, that's also coming from your mind, okay? Moments of creativity can be planted in your mind and you can have more of them next year than you had this year. And you can be the most creative educator or, or government uh, person or organizational leader or you can plan Sorry, moments of creativity, okay? You just plant them in your mind, and your mind changes and becomes more creative. It's, it's exciting, it's cool. And I'm not, I don't care if you, you should learn what I'm saying, take it home, use it for yourself, okay? You don't have to join anything. I don't want your picture, my picture in your house. Uh, it's not very cool. Uh, I don't care. Take what I'm talking about, take it home and use it in your life. And you never have to re report back. I don't care, okay? Sometimes a person, you have her name, uh, Kaplan Taylor? Sometimes a person will come to me like a year later. This is Linda Kaplan Taylor. She was sitting here, okay, in New York during a talk, not too long ago. She's a secretary in an ad company, right? And she's like, I'm like talking about how to plant creative moments, you know. I'm like giving her the same talk. And she's like this, you know. And then like a year later, someone calls me, you know, and they say, I said, what? They said, some lady's on the Today Show talking about your book. And I like turn on the TV, you know, and here's, here she is, you know. And they're like, so Linda, how did you make a, a billion dollar company? I'm like, billion dollar, that's four times bigger than my company. <laughs> And then, uh, <laughs> and she's like, oh, I used this book, The Diamond Cutter, you know. I met this guy, he gave a talk about creativity. I started using it. I quit my job as a secretary. I, I rented an apartment in the East Village, a one-room junkie apartment, and I started an ad agency. You can check online. It's Linda, Ka it's Kaplan Taylor Advertising. And she invented the Toys R Us thing and all this other stuff, the duck on Aflac. She invented all these things uh, because she was sitting here and then she planted all those things and now she's got a billion dollar company. You have a building? That's her building, okay? On Madison, okay? In the 50s. It's like, I call her up, I say, let's do lunch. She says, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Geshla. You know, I, I say, well, yeah. And so, how... It, it happens all over the... So that's what I, my dream for you. You don't have to report back. I'll see you on the Today Show. <laughs> okay? I don't care. Take it and run. Take it and run with it. You don't have to join anything. You, I don't have to see you again. Just use it in your life. And that's all I care. You know? 
So four steps. I'll say the four steps again. You want to know how to plant a mental seed. Okay? This comes from ancient Tibetan wisdom, okay? And China, also in China. It's called uh, Abhidharma. And uh, they're called Shi Sampa Jorwa Tartu. So I'll say the Tibetan word is good luck, and it makes me look smart. Ready? Shi Sampa Jorwa Tartu. Shi Sampa Jorwa Tartu. We talked about it yesterday, I'll review quickly because it's not fair to the people who did come last night to make them sit through it again. She means uh, decide what you want in your life. I would like to make a breakthrough in this education problem in my town. The, the children are not achieving a certain level or something like that. I would like to have a breakthrough in that. Or I would like to do a breakthrough with women in China. Or something. I want a breakthrough in my personal life. Or, you know, I want to break through with my partner, you know. We used to be really intimate. We used to have really exciting times together. And now it just seems like boring. And physically boring and emotionally boring. And it's all the, all the excitement is gone. I, that's my goal. Tell me what you, you decide. Step number one. It's on that little piece of paper you have, okay. Did they get? There's a tiny little thing that you're supposed to put in your refrigerator, okay. Can I hold it up? Sure. Thank you. It's got a little tiger in the bottom. We use it in China a lot, that's why. Okay. Uh, this came from Shanghai. Okay, anybody doesn't have one, you want one, you know, it's for your refrigerator. Tape it on your refrigerator, okay? It's the four steps. It's Shisamba Jordatu. Number one, decide what you want. Here's the trick, okay? Here's the trick to planting a seed. Number two, you must find another human being who wants the same thing you want, okay? You must find another person somewhere in your life, in your family, your co-workers, uh, anyone who wants the same thing that you want. You cannot plant a seed without another person. It's not possible. You cannot bounce a basketball without a floor, okay? It's not possible. You can try. I don't know what will happen. <laughs> Probably just you lose the ball, right? <laughs> it goes somewhere. You need a floor to bounce the basketball. To plant a mental seed, you cannot do it without other people. It's not possible. And they must be in need. They must be someone who needs something, okay? Uh, someone who needs what you need, you know? I, I, want to, I want my husband to be more affectionate. Then you must find a person who's starving for affection from their husband or, or from their children or someone else. You must find another person with the same need, okay? That's principle number two. You cannot use this system without another person. Then people will say to me, I don't know anybody who needs some affection. <laughs> then I will say, you check for 24 hours and you get back to me. And then they say, I found Tan, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the next day I get this email, I found Tan, <laughs> you know? <laughs> How did you find Tan that you didn't know about the day before? I never paid attention to the condition of the people around me. I wasn't aware that every one of my friends had the same problem with their husband, you know? Because I never asked them, or I wasn't listening. You see what I mean? So you will discover Step number two, you will discover that people have been expressing their needs to you all along and you weren't listening. You see what I mean? So you will find 10 people who want the same thing. By the way, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. If you want a zillion dollars and they want a gazillion, that's okay. <laughs> all right? That's the same thing, okay? Uh, something similar. You must find a person and you must make a plan, okay? Normally, in, we would do two nights and then we would do a three-day retreat. We would take you out in the country somewhere. And uh, there are three parts of the second one called, say, Kunlong. If you don't say anything, I'm going home. <laughs> Kunlong. <laughs> Duche. <laughs> Nyomong. <laughs> Kunlong. <laughs> Duche. <laughs> Nyomong. These are three aspects of step number two, okay? And we, it's more detail. And you can go for, we have 12 levels of this training. You're getting the first half of the first level. We have 12 levels that we go through. We're about to leave in Hamburg. We're 
They're up to five. They're the highest in the world right now. Singapore is close. Beijing's on three. Uh, so anyway, the second part of number two is that you must make a plan for this other person. It's good intentions, plant some seeds, but not much. Okay? You don't get much credit for good intentions. You have to make a concrete plan for the help you're going to give this other person. You must. Okay? And I suggest a place and a time. And I always tell people, take them out to Starbucks and talk to them. You know? Take them out to Starbucks and talk to them. About what? About the affection problem with their husband. Okay? Then what am I supposed to say? Just ask them. You say, I have a problem with my husband, and maybe you have the same problem. Can you help me? Tell, you know, it's a better way to act. Don't say, I heard your husband's a creep. You know, let's go out to <laughs> Starbucks, you know. Say, be a more finesse, have more finesse, you know. Say, you know, I have a problem. Frankly, I have a problem, and I, I want more affection. And I think you might want it too. Let's go out and help each other. Let's, let's go out once a week to Starbucks. I like Starbucks because it's neutral territory, you know. You know, you, you're not going to their house and they're not coming to your house. So if they want to get up and walk out, they can. And if you want to get up and walk out, you can. You know, you're like free, right? I like it. I like Starbucks for that reason. It's a big social thing, right? Starbucks is wonderful. Uh, so anyway, take the, the plan. Second part of number two, make a plan. Number three is what? Duh. Take them to Starbucks, okay? Just take them out. Do you have to solve their problems? No. Can you solve their problems? No. Why not? You have the same problem. <laughs> if you knew how to fix your husband, you would have done it already. Who are you to tell them how to fix their husband? You know? uh, but it's the intention. Intention is 90% of all seeds. That's the kunlong that I just mentioned. Kunlong means if your heart is to want to help them, if your heart is pouring out to them, I want to help you out. I'm not capable of helping you out. I have the same problem, but let's try. It's that words in your mouth. Let's try plants the seed, okay? That, let's try plants the seed, okay? You don't have to solve other problems. I'll ask you a difficult question, okay? You're already mental seed experts. Is it even possible to help another person get a more affectionate husband? Is it possible to change another person? Will your words cause their husband to be more affectionate? Yes or no? Does everyone who, who give advice to another person succeed in making their, their husband more affectionate? No. Uh, if they don't succeed, why did they fail? Hmm? Yeah, because that person sees. That person had their own seeds. You cannot control other people's seeds, okay? You have to learn that. Only the person can plant their own seeds. You cannot loan seeds to another person, okay? It's very interesting. You must do your own good deeds. No one else can loan you some, good, some extra good deeds they have, okay? You must be kind yourself, and you must serve someone else yourself. No one else can put a seed in your mind. You can't make anybody else anything. It's not possible. Can I make you happy? No, I cannot. You know? I can teach you how to plant a seed, but then you have to plant the seed. You see what I mean? I can't plant a seed for you. Each person must be kind to other people, and that plants a seed for them. But I cannot give you seeds. I can show you how to plant them. I can, I can field your questions, which we'll do after the break, okay? So you stay awake, uh, after all that junk food. Um, I can field your questions about seeds, but I can't plant them for you. You must do it yourself. You must take someone out to Starbucks. Nobody else can do it for you, okay? That's one thing you have to do. Step number three, you must help them. You must actually help them. If you don't, nothing will happen, okay? I guarantee, nothing will happen. And then ngepa, they pelchewa, these are the four principles of karma in the ancient books. Lengepa means you do something good, you get something good. You do something bad, you get something bad. You cannot get thorns from, grapes from thistles or figs from thorns or whatever it was. 
Okay? If you plant a mango, you ain't going to get a grapefruit. Okay? It's that simple. The first law of karma. This isn't part of this class, but anyway, it's okay. Second law of karma. It always gets bigger. It always gets bigger. Help another person for half an hour to plant seeds to make their husband more affectionate. Your husband will become more affectionate for a week. Okay? Because of the second law of karma, all seeds expand exponentially. Every 24 hours, a seed within the subconscious doubles in power. At the end of a week, it's how many? Ningbo, where are you? Eric? A thousand? How many at the end of a month? Over two billion. Okay? The, po the power, never, never pass up a chance to do a small kindness. Because within a month, that power has, is two billion times stronger. According to this ancient teachings, never pass up a chance to give some, you know, you have like the last piece of a chocolate chip cookie, give it to somebody. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding, like, jump on little chances. Someone's trying to find a parking space. You know, you know, like that, you know, give them the parking space. You know, no, a person who really understands this system is, is looking for little chances to do things, you see, because they always grow. Third principle of karma, le ma chepa na ma chepa means, uh, if, oh, that's what I was trying to get to. If you don't take them to Starbucks, nothing's going to happen. If you don't plant a seed, your husband, why will you expect your husband to change? You see? Are you going to talk them into being affectionate? Do you want to know what a hug feels like when you've argued your way into a hug? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you've proven to your husband why you should have a hug. Now you, did I prove to you I need a hug? Yes. Okay, give me the hug. Like, it doesn't feel that good. Because <laughs> they don't want to hug you. You just talk them into it. Say, le ma chepa da ma chepa means uh, unless you provide someone else with a way to get affection. You cannot get affection yourself. It cannot happen. It will never happen. Your situation will never change unless you help someone else. Not possible. The fourth law, by the way, if it appears to happen, what do you think is the answer to that? If it appears that a person's husband suddenly becomes more affectionate after not being affectionate for a long time, and you didn't do anything to make someone else's husband more affectionate. Why do you think it happens? Why do random acts of affection sudden, why, does this, why do some people's husbands suddenly change without using the system? It's an older scene. It's an older scene. They were affectionate to someone a long time ago. Okay, and that scene's only just now uh, opening. Where? In your mind, in your own mind. Okay, the seed is opening in your own mind. And the husband becomes more affectionate, okay? Who plants a seed? I do. How? At Starbucks. What records the seed? My awareness of my attempt to help the other person records the seed. My awareness of my own words, of my own gestures, of my own feelings towards them. My awareness of me trying to help someone else is what plants a seed, okay? It's very cool. That's what plants a seed in your subconscious. There's always a witness there, okay? The flip side of that is if you want to do something bad, it doesn't help to go in the, your room and close the door. <laughs> because it's always recorded by you. If you're aware that you're doing something wrong, it has been recorded, okay? You can say there's a guy uh, up at the pearly gates. Who is that? I forget. St. Peter, he's recording everything. In this system, you, you can, St. Peter can go to Starbucks and relax because your own mind is recording everything you do, okay? And it doesn't miss anything, it, not a single second. You can have a moment's irritation at someone, your mind will record it and it will come back to you. That's the fourth law of karma. It will always come back. Anything you do, anything you say, and more powerfully, anything you think will come back to you. Always. There's no exceptions. No one can cut you slack. No one can say, oh, we'll cancel that one. You know, that was a tr tragedy. You didn't do that on purpose. That's okay. We'll let you go on that one. You know, according to this system, there's no such thing. You must, 
experience all kindnesses, the results of all kindnesses, and all harms you have done to others will come back to you. Now people get concerned, they're like... Uh, there is a way to um, short-circuit a scene. We'll talk about it before the end of the night, okay? Because I owe you that. If I don't see you for a couple months, I owe you that. Because we all have, right? My, one of my high school friends is here. We all make mistakes when we're 16, okay? Or 17, I don't know. When was that? Never mind. Uh, we all make some mistakes, big mistakes in our life. Small things that hurt other people a lot. Then obviously, if you're going to use this system, you have to learn how to take that seed out or, or defuse it. Technically, you cannot take the seed out, but you can, what do you call it? In Tibetan, they say a sabon tsik. It means to scorch a, a seed, like to pl apply fire to a seed. And then something happens to the seed, it ruins the seed. Um, you put too much heat on a seed with a fire or a flame, or like a candle flame on a small seed. The seed is still there. You see, that's the point. The seed is still in your mind, but it will never grow. It has been... Cauterized. Something has broken inside of the seed. The, the seed is still whole. It looks good. It looks like a regular seed, but it has been... Um, Ruined. It has been somehow sterilized. Sterilized is good. Neutralized is good. I feed my finches. You have finches in Flagstaff? Yellow, little yellow banana colored guys. And I feed them Niger seed. Niger seed is a thorn seed that comes from India. It's illegal to import it without radiating it. So they bring it in 25 pounds bags and they radiate it, you know. And uh, it it does something to the seed. Then the ones that the birds drop don't create thorn bushes all over my garden. You see what I mean? So whatever you want to call that, sterilize them or something. De de deactivate them. Anyway, there's a way, and I'll teach you before the end of the night if we don't spend the whole time on me trying to find that word. Okay. Uh, so that's the basic system for planting a seed. Okay, and you can plant anything. You can plant creativity in your own mind. You can plant youthful energy. You can plant uh, financial independence. You can plant a peaceful world. And we have to talk that before tonight we have a lot of jobs because I won't see you for a while. We have to discuss how would you change the nature of the world itself. To let no poverty, uh, no, no war. Like, is it possible? Is that also coming from me? Like, is, is the state of Iraq and Afghanistan, is that also coming from me? And we have to talk about that before the night is over, okay? I have not found the seed for hair. Uh, <laughs> but I'm checking the scriptures. Uh, okay, <laughs> so we'll get to that. All right, so I think we take a break. Seven years it is of ancient philosophy. They studied 10,000 pages of these books. They had 300 classroom hours and seven years of training before they went into retreat. But there was an incident of domestic violence and we had to take action. I think as a board in the university, there's been, I think, 50 deaths in the United States in universities this year, shootings and other. And we just didn't feel like we should condone it or we should allow it and they refused to uh, cooperate. They refused to even talk to us at all about when we tried to do an inquiry. So we asked them to leave. And that's the bottom line of it. And then the press got on with People magazine and, and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, what do you call that? Daily news and things like that. And they made it into some weirdo thing, but it, it isn't. It, it's a very, there are, the people in retreat there, there's a medical doctor, MD, there's two PAs, there's a registered nurse, there's a PhD in computer science, there's a PhD in biology, there's a PhD in um, something else, I don't remember. <laughs> there's a commercial airline pilot, there's a published military historian, they're all serious people, and they're good people. I mean, the press got a hold of them, and it became something very strange. So I'm sorry about that. I 
it was very sad for us. Uh, but I think any university would have had, had to do the same thing. You can't allow violence on campus. Especially in America right now. Yes, Marco, it's such a matter of honesty on this. First of all, thank you yeah. so much for taking so long. Yeah. yeah. Um, this thing about planting seeds. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we cannot plant seeds for another person. So, I mean, we we can teach people how to plant seeds, but you can't force it on people. You can say, uh, if you would like to have violence, is not a part of this system. If you want, what's the cause of violence in the world? You know, what is the, in the scripture? It says, "A hence of Pakistan, that's in our this is sunscreen. Uh, the cause of violence in the world is small violence that I have done myself and which I continue to do on a daily basis. I say small things to people which are hurtful. I, uh, I cut in front of another person in traffic. I uh, get irritated at the lady at the counter in the grocery store. Then. How can these be causes of violence in my world? I, I'm doing small, unkind things to other people, you know? Then, are you proposing that this has caused Iraq or Afghanistan in my world? And the answer is, yeah. yes. Why? Because of that principle that seeds double every 24 hours, okay? You can do a small act of violence to someone. And if you don't take that seed out, or you don't deal with that scene, you will see violence around you, and it's coming from you. The violence you see in the world, according to this, is coming from us. And, and then you get depressed, you know, you're like, are you saying I'm responsible for Iraq? Yes. And Afghanistan? Yes. And all the other violence and sadness I see in the world? And is it me? And the answer is, yes, it is. And then you can get, uh, what do you call it? You can lose hope about that. But, but we are trained by our teachers to look at it the other way. You know, now I have a way to change the world. I can personally affect the violence in the world by not engaging in violence myself, in small acts of violence. So then I have to observe my own life. And I must be careful not to commit violence, any kind of violence. So people ask me, is, what's the event at your university caused? Who, who, whose fault? And in the end, I have to say, what? Well, my fault. Okay, why did I see violence? Uh, because I have, I have committed small acts of violence constantly, every day, all day, towards other people. Un small, unkind acts build up into things like Afghanistan. So it's very interesting. That's what, that's our belief. So in the end, I have to examine myself. And, and I have to be a more peaceful person. Cool. <laughs> it's a hard answer. But it's a good answer. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to know, what influence does your call, or individual call, have on the people that you play? It was OK. You know, and then uh, when I got to Tibet to study with Tibetans, they were very clear that conception begins at the moment, sorry, life begins at the moment of conception. I'm not trying to convince you that. It's not my goal and it's not my business. Your body is your own. Your, your life is your own. I'm just reporting what my Lama, my Lama that I lived with for 25 years, who became like my father, and I loved him like my father. Okay. Uh, out of concern for me, he said, you have to get rid of that seed. You have to take care of that seed. You know? And I felt it. Inside me, I felt it. I'm not trying to convince you about abortion. It's your own life. It's your own business. Myself, I felt something wrong. I felt like I have to clean this. It doesn't hurt to clean it just in case, okay? <laughs> so uh, I said, okay, tell me what I have to do. And he said, there are four steps to clean any past mistake. Anything you ever did to hurt anyone, you can clean it. Okay? Clean is, technically, you cannot remove a seed from your mind until it opens. It's not possible. 
There's no such thing. The universe runs by a perfect justice. You will always get back exactly what you have done to others. You cannot escape this justice. In this system, there's no exceptions. But you can radiate the Niger Sea. Okay, you can, uh, and the diamond cutter, Jikang Jing, it, it teaches the method. The Jikang Jing, the oldest book in the world, oldest book of the day, printed. Uh, it tells you, the Diamond Cutter Sutra has a chapter about how to disable a, a, an old mistake so that it doesn't come back to you, okay? It will go off with a fizz, you know. <laughs> And it's done, you know, you're like, ah, you know, I didn't have that car accident, or I didn't get cancer, you know, and uh, so here's the four steps, okay? You should know it, all right? Just try it, it doesn't hurt. Do a little house cleaning, you know? We all have some things we did that were mistakes, and it's good to admit it. Okay, number one. Uh, where is it? Think about the pen. Just think about the pen, if I can find it. Right. Just think about the pen, that's all. Just think about it. Think about where things are coming from, that's all. Okay. Is it coming from itself or is it coming from me? It's coming from me. Don't take it as a, what do you call it, article of this new religion. There is no new religion. I don't care what you are, it doesn't matter to me. It's, it's not faith. We proved it with the dog. Okay, that's all. Things must be coming from you because why? Because you don't want to chew it. And you don't start slobbering every time I hold it up. <laughs> because uh, it must be coming from, from you. Okay, that's all. Think about that. Okay, everything is coming from you. That's step number one to what? Disabling an old bad scene. Disarming. And all that scene. I saw a movie once and I can't help mentioning it, and it's kind of naughty, okay? But that's how I am. Uh, it was John Travolta. It was a bad movie in his later time, right? After the disco movies. And uh, called Broken Arrow. And there's an atomic bomb about to go off. And he's straddling it and trying to pull the wires out. And I'm like, when that goes off, that's going to hurt right, right where he's got it. Where he's got it, you know. They had a very primal thing that he was, I'm like, damn, that's going to hurt. You know, and, uh, and then at the last minute, he pulls out the right wire and nothing, it doesn't go off. That's what we want to do with the abortion scene or whatever it was for you. We want to reach in and disable the scene. Okay. Is there a way to disable a seed? Can you remove the seed? No. It will stay there forever, but it will never go off. Or it will go off with a fizz. Okay? So, step number one, just think about the pen. Step number two, just consider what will happen if you don't. Okay? If, you, if it's true that the power of a negative seed doubles every 24 hours, Okay, then where is it now? Yeah, after two years or after three years, you know, what will happen to me when that seed opens? Okay, just think about it. You know, just think about it. That's all. That's supposed to get you to have a, a feeling of, in, well, we call it intelligent regret. There's no word for guilt in Tibetan or Sanskrit. I'm not aware of a word for guilt. Okay, there's no word in those languages for I'm a bad person like that. You rather, step number two is like you feel empowered. I can, I can kill this thing and I'm gonna do it. Like dirty hair, you know. Make my day. You know, I'm gonna take care of this thing. You know, like that. It's a kind of, uh, what do you call it? In Tibetan they call it Nagyal. Nagyal means uh, I'm the king. But it means confidence. It means I can deal with this thing. You're not paralyzed by guilt. You are empowered by the knowledge that you can kill this seed. Okay? So step number two is like, I gotta deal with this seed. I can't just let it go on in the hopes that it will never come back to me. Because there's no such thing. Just there's no such thing as a as a harmful action which does not come back to hurt you. It will come back. So with that knowledge, you're not scared, you're 
you're like, I got to get rid of this thing before, before it opens. I got to get this thing out of my guts. I got to get rid of this thing. So that's step number two. Before this thing gets out of hand, I got to defuse it. Now, and you feel like, right, I can do it. You know, that's step number two. Step number three is the most important. There is no more important step to removing a, a negative seat. There is no more important step. If you don't remember the other three, just remember number three. Okay, what is number three? Uh, you make a commitment not to do it again. And that destroys the power of the seat. Very cool. Very interesting. You make a commitment to yourself or you, they say it's very powerful to make it to someone else. It could be someone you know. It's very powerful to say it out loud to anybody. It doesn't matter, uh, anybody. I, I promise I'm not gonna do that thing again. In my case, I, I said I will never be involved with that again. I became a monk. I'm safe. <laughs> yeah, like that, it just won't happen. You know, it can't happen. You see, like, so make a commitment. I will never do that thing again. Now, the great scriptures of time. And again, we have a project. For 25 years, we have been typing in those scriptures. Uh, we've done half a million pages. The Tibetan refugees are typing like all day for 25 years. And now it's online, you know, it's 20, 500,000 pages of, of scriptures. We have 150 years to go. That's how vast the Tibetan wisdom is. You know, we have 150 years. We are planned to go for five more generations. We've already been through two generations, okay? Uh, the grandkids of our original operators are typing. Uh, so anyway, and the computers are from 1985 also. Uh, that's another problem. That's where most of my personal money went to. It took millions of dollars. And we fed them thousands of refugees. So anyway, uh, the great books say you must make a commitment. And then the books have a small print on number three. Okay, what's the small print? What would you like, what seat would you like to destroy? I got mad at my husband yesterday. Okay, will you make a commitment? Yes, I want to remove the seat. Otherwise, people around me will be angry with me for weeks. I want to remove that seat. So will you make the commitment? Yes. What's the commitment? I will never get angry at my husband again. Come on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like these great llamas will be up there and they'll say, Karina, come on, you know, hopeless man, you're going to get mad at him before this evening is over, you know, on the evening you made the promise, you'll get angry with him again before you go to bed, it's sure, you know, so then the great books say, make a time limit, set a time limit, okay, and with things like anger, it can be a day, or three days, I, I always tell people, make a commitment not to get angry at your husband or say something bad to him on a Friday. Then come on a DCI three-day retreat <laughs> and leave your phone at home. And, you know, you won't see him till Monday. So, because you will make a new negative seat. You see, if you overcommit, uh, you just take, take a step back, you see. You, then you've made a new negative scene. Uh, so they say, set a time limit, okay? I, I will, with an abortion, that's easy, for the rest of my life. But for uh, getting angry at your husband, until I see him again. <laughs> you know, like, pick something reasonable. And I'm not kidding, and the power is still good, the power is good, but you cannot break that commitment. If you break it, then the whole deal is off. Okay, so make a reasonable commitment. Okay, step number three is make a reasonable commitment for your circumstances, whatever your circumstances are. Step number four. Step number three is negative. If you think about it, it's a commitment not to do something. Step number four is positive. Uh, I make a commitment to do something positive to balance the to action, some balancing thing. Okay, in my case, 
I made a commitment to teach the children in my neighborhood, and I taught them for 15 years. Okay, I taught the children in my neighborhood for 15 years, and I bribed them to come to class with. Them. I was living in a Buddhist temple, and they were all Buddhist. They were all Mongolians, so I, I made a deal with the parents, and they came for class, and the parents came to class, and for 15 years I taught them. Okay, so you make some positive commitment, uh, which is the opposite. You see, I mean, uh, in my belief, I killed a child, so then I must give children life. I must do something to serve children, right? So you make a, what do you call it, make-up activity. Something to make up for the karma, okay? If you do those four things, you will get the signs that that seed is gone, okay? I'll tell you the signs so it's enough. Then you can get mad at your husband again. You know, just kidding. Uh, there's two signs that a seed is, is, has left. Number one, it will fizz, right? The, the bomb will go fizz. You will have a, a brief, violent, negative occurrence in your life. Uh, the Buddha, in the Jinkan Jin, mentions uh, an, an, ex, an, an extreme migraine for two to three days. A person who has never had a migraine will have an extremely painful migraine for two or three days and then suddenly it's gone. And the seed's power has been, you, you would have been in a car accident or you would have gotten breast cancer or something, and you get a violent headache for two or three days. That's a, then if you know about seeds, you're happy. You're like, yay, I got the headache, you know? <laughs> and the power of the seed is just, you know? It's, I don't know, how would you say that in English? It's, uh, it's fizzling out. Just tiny little result has come to me. I was supposed to be in a car accident. And now look, I, I just got a two or three day migraine. And then, you, and then the second say, sign that the scene is finished is that you will suddenly feel very light and happy as if someone has taken a burden off you that you've been carrying all that time and you didn't notice. You see, I mean, you carry those seeds, you carry those burdens in your life, and you don't, and you get used to being like this, and it becomes part of you. You, you have it on your mind. You have the death of it. In my case, it's on your heart. It's weighing on your heart. And then when the seed is taken out, suddenly you feel like 10 years younger or something, and you, you feel like someone has freed you from something you didn't know you had. You didn't know you were carrying it. And suddenly you feel like someone took a huge burden off you. And you feel joyful and happy and light in your life. And that's the second sign. Okay? So when those two signs happen, that's enough. And then our lamas say, it's done with. And don't think about it. And don't ever think about it again. You can forget it. It's over. You know, the whole thing is over. I can talk about it because for me it's over. I took care of it, I'm clean of it, I don't intend to do it again, and I feel happy. And for me it's a non-event now, it's, a, it's gone. And my mama heard about, uh, what do you call that in the Catholic Church? At the last moment, uh, it's called last breath. Some priest comes to a dying person and says, do you have anything to confess at the last minute. When my Lama heard about that, he got excited. He was really happy. He says, oh, good custom, good custom. You know, that's fantastic. That's so smart. You know, clean at the last minute. If you know someone who's dying, my dad was dying uh, from cancer. I was in his home. I watched more football games that month than I'll ever watch a game or before because he couldn't do anything else. He was dying. I made him orange juice, which was all he could take, and I watched him die. And then I thought, I asked my teacher, you know, he's got all these seeds, you know, these old bad seeds. And he said, what kind of seeds? And my dad was on a submarine in World War II. He lied to the Navy. He said he was 16. He was 15. He got on a submarine at age 15. And his job was deck gunner, which you never use the gun on top of a submarine because you're always underwater. But if you torpedo another boat, and all those guys are swimming in the water, you come up and you shoot them off. Helpless people in the middle of the Pacific, you shoot them. 
and that was his job. You know, he was assigned at age 15 to shoot hopeless people drowning in the, in the middle of a thousand miles of sea. And he couldn't get it off. So then, you can trick people, okay? Sit with them as they're dying and say, you know, Dad, tell me about that Navy thing. Tell me about what you did again. And then he told me, and then I said, would you do that now? I mean, would you ever do that again? He said, no, no, I would never do it again. Step number three. <laughs> you see? So you can trick people. You know, you get their mind in a certain, you take their mind to a certain place, and then you say, would you do that again? And he said, no. Then I, then he can die, you see? Then he can die without it, you see? So it's very important, help people to let go of something negative they've done before they die. Okay, and that's how you remove a, a bad seed. And you should try, you should do it. Tonight you should do it, okay? Tonight you should do it, okay? Whatever seeds you have, you should do it. And you feel so happy, okay? Uh, so that's just like a bonus thing. I wasn't supposed to talk about that tonight. Uh, one more question or two more questions, if you have. Say what it is you want. I want focus. Number two. Find someone else who needs focus and give it to them. Um, how do you give someone focus about interrupting other people? Okay? Be, if you're interested in gaining some kind of focus in your life, if you would like to be able to have a focused, powerful, meditative state of mind, it's very interesting in Tibet, we have a very, very sophisticated methods of meditation. We are trained for many years. Uh, and that's actually DCI level three. We take you through the traditional training of how to develop a powerful mind. We take business people through the traditional training for developing a powerful state of mind. There are nine states of mind. There are eight antidotes. There are five traditional problems. There are four modes that you go through. It's very beautiful. It's all on this beautiful carved ancient carved painting. And we take business people, like in Germany, we took a whole group through this uh, focus training. But in the end, if you want the bottom line, uh, what creates focus, the seed for focus, is to be kind to other people. It's morality, it's ethics, it's very strange, okay? What the Tibetans decided after a thousand years was that maintaining basic ethical standards creates focus. It's the karma for focus, okay? What are ethical standards? It's the same in Tibet as it is in uh, Judeo-Christian tradition, okay? There are 10 guidelines. Uh, number one, I'll give them to you real fast. You're getting everything tonight. Uh, we got 15 more minutes, hang in there. And I'm sorry to overwhelm you, but I won't see you for a while, so it's important. If you want to learn to meditate, there are many, many things to learn. Posture, how to hold your eyes, how to hold your teeth, how to hold your tongue, how to hold your shoulders, your pelvis, what kind of seat to have, how to prepare the room. You know, all this thing, but it boils down to keep ten codes of conduct and you will have meditation. What are the ten codes of conduct? Number one, respect life. Respect life. Don't kill, don't harm. Also animals, don't kill animals. Okay? Don't kill. Respect life. Every living being loves their life. Respect it, number one. Uh, number two, respect other people's property. Okay, don't steal things. Public property is, is the most uh, difficult. People who will never pee pee on their own toilet seat at home will shoot all over the bathroom in a public bathroom. I don't know what that is. I don't know why that is. But for boys, it's pretty weird. Uh, so, with public, uh, respect other people's property. Okay, The roads have been paid for by everyone. Uh, if you litter, if you throw garbage on a street, technically you are harming everyone who paid taxes to build that street. It's very subtle. It's very profound. Uh, we have to respect other people's property. Okay? 
Number two. <laughs> Number three, respect other people's partners. Okay? Uh, respect people who are in a committed relationship. Okay? Is it wrong to hit on a girl who's available? No. It's fine. Uh, is it wrong to hit on a person who's in a committed relationship? Yes, it's a very, very bad karma and, and it will hurt you. Bad karma is defined, by the way, by what hurts you later. Not by what hurt, it hurts somebody else, it hurts you. Okay? So number three is uh, respect other people's partnerships. In Tibet they have a guideline. Never say or do anything to another person's partner that you wouldn't do if their partner and your partner weren't there at the time. We're there at the time, sorry. Got it? Always pretend your partner's standing next to you when you engage in a conversation with someone of the opposite, opposite sex. Got it? That's the guideline. And it's not, you, it makes you happy, okay? These are not, what do you call, rules that you must follow. No one's gonna, what do you call it? Yeah. Punish you. There's no such thing. Your life will not be happy if you do these things, that's all. You won't get what you want. If you want to have a beautiful partner, don't hit on other people's partners, then you'll get a better one. It's just good sense, common sense. It's a cool system, okay? Whatever person you're attracted to who's already married, respect their relationship, a better one will come. Duh! You know, like, just get it. You know, you can get a better one, how? Respect the other person's partnership. And if you, suppose you get that person, suppose you're able to take another person's wife away, or husband away, what will happen? According to this principle, someone will take them away. You know, they'll cheat on you. It's like the dumbest thing you can do. What are you gonna take someone's partner? Yeah, I like them. Then someone else is gonna take them in two years. Or you'll get divorced in two years, and divorce number three, divorce number three. You know, there's no end, okay? Anyway, we can talk about that. Next one, what number are we on? Four. 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 You're good. All right. Uh, tell the truth. Speak truthfully. Okay? Speak truthfully. I'll tell you the standard of truth in Tibet, and it's difficult. What does it mean to speak the truth? Someone says to you, uh, what kind of refreshments did they have at the program tonight that everyone worked so hard to provide, which is very kind. It's so nice that they didn't have cheap potato chips and stuff. They had nice cheeses and cool stuff. So someone says to you, what did they, what kind of refreshments did they have at the program tonight? Then into your mind pops a picture of what refreshments they had tonight at the program. Right? A picture pops into your mind. With your words, in the next minute, you must communicate to the other person in such a way that the same picture rises in their mind. And that's truth. And that's difficult. Okay? That's truth. Right? Truth means, by your words, another person gets the same image in their mind that you have in your mind. Perfect picture of all the refreshments. You see what I mean? Accurate video of the same event. Got it? That's truth. It's difficult. Why tell the truth? People around you will be truthful for the rest of your life. Okay? Seeds multiply. Be truthful for six weeks. Enjoy the results for the rest of your life. Okay? It's cool. Just everyone around you is honest all the time. It's very refreshing. Okay? Okay, number two. Don't split up other people with your speech. Bring people together. Struggle to bring people together. You hear that this person's not getting along with that person. Make it your business to try to bring them back together. You see what I mean? Uh, that's number five. Okay. Uh, number six is don't say things that hurt other people's feelings. Okay. Uh, be careful. I'm, I make jokes, I make a lot of jokes, and I hurt people's feelings. People inform me later that it wasn't funny, and it hurt my feelings, you know? So you have to watch people's faces as you speak to them, even if you're telling a joke, and make sure you're not hurting their feelings, okay? That's number six. six. Number seven is to waste speech. 
to waste words with other people. Uh, did you hear about uh, Brad Pitt's latest scandal, you know? And useless talk, I guess you can call it useless talk. Avoid useless talk. Don't waste the precious moments of other people's lives with gossip or stupid things from the National Enquirer or People magazine, <laughs> things like that. Like, don't waste other people's time. Say, when you speak, you only have so many words in your life, it's finite. You will only speak so many words in your life. Do you really want to spend uh, 2,000 of those words on Brad Pitt's latest problem? You know what I mean? And then the answer is no. I don't want to waste my words that way. Your words are limited. The words you will be allowed to speak in this life are, are numbered. Use them wisely, okay? Uh, number eight. Yeah. Now number eight. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is difficult. Uh, when something good happens to somebody else, you feel unhappy. That's number eight. By the way, the last three are by far the most serious. Okay? Someone else gets a promotion. Someone else finds a beautiful partner. Somebody else is wearing an elegant dress tonight. And you feel like, you feel unhappy about other people's success. Okay? I don't know why we do that. It's a sad thing. We are incapable, often, of enjoying other people's successes. And that's number eight. And it's, it, it's very serious. Lord Buddha taught 84,000 negative actions. 84,000 in the scriptures. These are the top 10. <laughs> These are the top 10. It means we must be doing it almost constantly. All day we must be doing that. Look, her dress. <sighs> Dang. You know, I was in yoga class today. Dang, look at that guy. Look at his headstand, dang. You know, then you just did number eight, okay? It's a negative, uh, eight is very tricky, hard for me. It's almost like jealousy, right, or something like that. Number nine is uh, a fascination with other people's problems. It's the opposite of number eight in a way, you see? Oh, look, you know, they're having trouble. Look, the tragedy happened with their family, or, or look, oh, it's like, what do you call it when you're looking at a car accident? Rubbernecking. Yeah, it's rubbernecking. It's like this art fascination with the problems of famous people or normal people. Oh look, uh, she got cancer. Or, oh look, uh, they, they broke up. Or, you know, oh look, you know, and, and we have this, uh, it's not that we are evil and we are not happy that they are suffering. But we have this unhealthy interest in it. We are, it you see it uh, when you check out at the grocery store. All those magazines, they're a long, it's painful to go check out. I try to concentrate on the gum. You know, <laughs> because uh, there's six, there's six uh, magazines about people's, somebody's plastic surgery fail. You know, and, you know, you should be sorry about that. You know, uh, it's not something to take joy in. You see what I mean? So we have this problem. And then I think we're done for the night, okay? Uh, oh, one more thing I have for you after that. The tenth one, and the most serious one, is to believe that anything in the world is not coming from you. Okay? Oh, my husband is, my husband doesn't show me affection. It's coming from you. No, no, no. At the pen, maybe, but not my husband. <laughs> what applies to the pen applies to every event in your life. And every person you ever met in your life was an exact mirror of your personality. Okay? Every irritating person you ever met was coming exactly from you, precisely from you. The ratio of irritating to nice people in your life is exactly the ratio of irritatingness and being niceness inside you, okay? People are like, you, <laughs> okay? That's number 10, okay? Number 10 is realize where the world is coming from and it's coming from you. It can be either depressing 
or it can be, it can fill you with hope. You know, I can change the world. I have the power to change. Oh, if the world's coming from me, I don't like the Iraq thing. I'm gonna take care of that. Okay, you have the power. All right, you have the power. Some lady asked me, "What? How do I get a partner?" I said, "Go to a nursing home. You know, help a lonely person because that's the seed." for meeting someone who will remove your loneliness, right? A person who's interested in a new relationship uh, must f locate a lonely person. It's your job, okay? You must locate a lonely Many, many, many people have asked me. Many, many people I have talked. Many, many people have gotten beautiful partners, okay? Where? At the nursing home, okay? <laughs> And it works. I want to say two things about that and then we're done, okay? Number one, many of the people I, I taught that thing, when they got their partner, they stopped visiting the person in the nursing home. Okay? And that's a bad idea. Why? Every hour that you spend with your new partner is using up seeds in your mind. You, you have a debit card that was charged up at the nursing home. And every hour you spend with your new partner, you are losing seeds because they create him. Got it? They are being used up every hour he's with you. So a smart person would go with their new partner to the <laughs> nursing home. We call it reinvestment. Reinvestment. If you make a million dollars using this system, what should you do with half of it? Give it again. Don't sit on it. Don't sit on it. Give it to somebody else. Turn it over. Make it an upward cycle. Okay? Don't stop. You can't stop. Okay? You have to keep going. Then this other person said, uh, how's that going to change the world? You made the claim. And this is the last thing I say, I promise. <laughs> you made the claim at the beginning of these two nights that the very use of this system for my personal goals would create peace in the world, would change the world, the whole world. Just run that by us, how that works, okay? You ready? We got two minutes. It might take a few minutes more, three minutes. Uh, I always tell this joke, okay? This is a joke, okay? But it's for real. Some lady told me, okay, I got the boy, he came. I planted a boy at the nursing home and he came. It, she was in a yoga class and he walked in. And they got married. I officiated at the ceremony. I helped her plan him and then I married them. It was awesome, you know? And uh, it was very cool. And then uh, she says, well, what do I do now? I said, when, he first, when she first got him, I said, now you've got to take care of the world. Now you have to change the world. Use him to change the world. She's like, what do you mean? Because everybody wants to be Spider-Man. Everybody wants to change the world. Why do they make X-Men, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Avengers 4? What is it? Why do we are fascinated by superheroes, Wonder Woman? Uh, we want to be that. That's why those movies sell. Make a superhero movie, have an anonymous kid in the Transformers save the world three times in a row, everyone will come because they want to do it. Everybody wants to be the anonymous kid who saves the world. Learn this system and you automatically have that power. Learn this system and the magic spider bit you and you will be Spider-Man. You see, just use this system to get the things you want and you are automatically serving the world. Explain that. So I told this lady, when she first got the boy, <laughs> this is a cool thing, I said, call up all your girlfriends. Tell them you have to meet them at the restaurant at 7 o'clock. She's like, okay, okay, I have four or five girlfriends. I said, tell them to meet you at the restaurant at 7 o'clock. She said, okay, what next? Call your new boyfriend. His name was Stefan, okay? You guys know him. Call your new boyfriend. Uh, tell him to come to your apartment at 7 o'clock. She's like, don't you mean 6.30? I'm like, no, 7. Okay, where am I supposed to be? At the apartment. What are we going to do at the apartment while they're waiting in the restaurant? Duh! Give him three big glasses of water. She said, what? Give him three big glasses of water. 
Don't worry, I'll explain. When he finishes the water, then go to the restaurant. And they said, what am I supposed to do at the restaurant? Just walk in with him arm in arm, you know. Then all of your friends, you'll be late, right? They'll be watching the door, you know, and this guy comes in with you arm in arm. Who's the guy? It must be her cousin. <laughs> Why do you say that? She hasn't had a boyfriend in three years, much less a good looking one. You know? <laughs> and then uh, walk in like he's your cousin or something. Then just in front of the table, give him a really good kiss. You know, like I'm talking booey, okay? <laughs> and then uh, what will they say? Not the cousin. <laughs> not her cousin. Or a weird cousin. No. Uh, not her cousin. It's not her cousin. And then uh, sit down with them. And there will be small talk and menu looking for t 10 minutes. Then what will happen? He has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> he will go to the bathroom. He'll excuse himself and go to the bathroom. Then what happens, you know? Where'd you get it? <laughs> What's the website? <laughs> you know, what club did you go to? Where did you meet him? Then you gotta say, Nursey Hall. Hall. <laughs> he looks so young. <laughs> you gotta be like, no, Nursey Hall, swear to God. You know? Then you have to tell him about seats, okay? At that point, before he gets back, so it's gotta be a little quick. And tell him about seats. Tell him, I went to Nursey Hall, I planted him purposely. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't a random act, act. I planted him and I reaped him. Jesus said something like that, right? No, seriously. It's what Jesus meant. Plant what you want and then sow. And, and I planted him quite purposely. And I got him. And, and he came. And I'm keeping him by... We go to the nursing home together. When can he, you and him stop? Never. You have to keep going. Suppose the old person passed away, find a new one. Okay? And then you will never, that relationship will continue forever. Beautiful, every year more beautiful. It's, it's cool. It's fantastic. Okay? Now, what will happen to the ladies at the table? Most of them will think you're crazy. I go through this myself. A few of them will try what you said and it never fails. It cannot fail. It's one of the laws of karma. It cannot fail. If you go to the nursing home and you take care of a lonely person and you take care of your blockers, right? Uh, you must, a partner must be created from you. Okay? Must come. No choice. It will come. Then what will happen to those lady friends of yours? What should they do? Three glasses of water. Three glasses of water. <laughs> yeah, they should do the same thing. Okay? What will happen in time? Long lines at the nursing homes. You know, is she available? No, she's booked. <laughs> when can I get in? It'll be like a plumber, you know, or your dentist. It'll be like your dentist. We have an opening on April 5th, 2014. You know, and then uh, she's got half an hour. You know, and there'll be long lines. Probably boys and girls will meet each other in those lines, I think. But, but try to imagine a world. You know, I taught this in Norway. We're going back uh, in a week or something. I taught it in Oslo. You know what has happened in Oslo now? The government has announced a campaign that anyone who brings a person over 65 to a theater, they both get in free. Okay? And that has come from that scene, you know? And they had a video. It's very beautiful. That a whole bunch of teenagers go to the nursing home, and they, they help the old people dress up, and then they take them to the movies together, and the teenagers get in for free. You know? So they're all like... Uh, what would happen in the world if every single person truly believed that the only way to become financially independent were to find a poor person and to help them? What would happen to poverty? No more poverty. Poor people would become precious. 
there would be dealers. Do you have an address? <laughs> Four person's phone number. Yeah, it was very positive. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not kidding, okay? Try to imagine a change, try to imagine a shift in civilization itself to a higher evolution where everyone believes the only way to get what they want is to supply it to someone else first. Try to imagine a whole world which is working that way. And that's the evolution of our world. It will come. It will come because it's, it works. So try to imagine that, okay? And that's why I'm here. That's why I want, I want to, I'll be very frank, okay? I go to China a lot. Taiwan, China, Singapore. I don't know if it's some kind of thing that was in the culture and never left or something, but they get it quickly. And I keep going. I keep, I'm invited to 14 more cities in China. I don't have time to go. And there are 14 cities waiting. Okay? I don't have time to go. A thousand or two thousand people will come each time. Then, I'm being very honest. It doesn't happen in America. You know? I, I give a talk in America. 50 people come, 100 people come. And they, they, they have trouble with the idea. They have trouble. I don't know how to express it. Somehow their minds are far away from that idea that you could plant a, a partner or that everyone would be wealthy, everyone would have enough. Uh, I gave a talk to 1,400 architects in Florida and uh, they said, what about oil? And I said, according to these principles, how could America assure its oil supply? You tell me. They, they told me, they got it. Give oil. Make sure China has enough oil. Make it your business to assure that China has enough oil for their progress. Make it your, the business of your country and design your legislation to assure oil supplies to your competitors. And then new sources of energy will be invented like the boy in the North of home. Okay? It's a very cool system. And they, 1,400 architects got it, you know, and they're all like, they're all like from the South, and they're all like, oh, damn, that worked, man. <laughs> and uh, just, I just tried to plan something these two days, okay? I just tried to plan something in my home because it's sad to me. My home is the, is falling. My country is, if you go to China or you go to other countries, this country is falling. You know? It is falling in many ways. Financially, morally, creatively. In many ways, this country is, is doomed for failure. If it continues on this course, this country will be a third world country in our lifetime. And your kids will be working in sweatshops for other countries' people and not the other way around. It's coming. It's almost there. And, and we go live in China for six months and you will see, okay? We are behind and we are dropping quickly. And there's a way to make both countries successful. There's a way to revive our country that would also make China successful. We can both be successful at the same time, you know? And it must come that way. It cannot come through this competition thing, you know? We should help other countries be successful. And the seed will make us successful. And until we do that, our country will fail. And your kids, mark my words, your kids will work in, in sweatshops for other countries. Okay? It will come if we don't do something. Okay? We must help other countries be successful. Give them oil supplies. Help them develop their economies. Even if they get better than us, we should be happy. That was what, number eight. Yeah, look, how successful China is. Man, that's cool. I'm happy for your country. We should be like that. This other thing that the press invents about evil countries, and don't believe that stuff, okay? Everyone's like us, and we must serve them and make them successful, okay? And I just think we should try to spread these ideas in, in our country. Because if we don't, in my opinion, we will, we will go down. Okay? 
So I leave you with that. I think it would be, uh, these ideas could revive our country you know, and, and then serve other countries. By serving other countries, our country would, would come back. And I don't see any other way, okay? All right, thank you. Good night.